I get my opening slide. All right, so I was going to talk about, um, you know, news and what's going on deploying fairness. So we are in a climate that's unhealthy for news lovers like us. And this is not just a problem for the United States. This is global. So it doesn't matter whether you're looking at your local news or international news. There's a general mistrust in what's going on around the world. Global events, the perception is that news is tilted, it's unbalanced, there's a lot of bias, we have a lot of polarity in the news, there's the feeling that um, news houses are more ideological, uh, putting forward different points of views, whichever ideological point of view they want to put out there, and that personal beliefs and things like that are fueling the news atmosphere. And so the consequences of this is that there's general distrust of the things that we see, whether on the air, on our cell phones, on TV, or whether we're reading them in newspapers, whether it's about elections, national elections in the, in the United States or global elections, whether it's in Nigeria or the Middle East or anywhere, there is the feeling that what you're hearing on your nightly news or you're reading on your blogs and so on um, is full of misinformation. And that is threatening democracies globally. Ordinary citizens like you and me, especially those who are not educated in news literacy and media literacy and things like that, they are confused. They don't know how to decipher what's true, what's right, what's wrong, or where to go for trusted news. And this has been exacerbated or fuel has been added to the fire because now AI has added in there the fear of deep fakes and things like that is polluting the atmosphere. So people are more skeptical now to believe anything that they read. So that's where the question comes in for me and you as researchers, especially in the humanities. What can we do or how can we help? All right, is, is the question that I'm confronted with every day as someone who works in this field. So before now, researchers have had difficulties, you know, to design studies that could help us try to make sense or start to make sense of this whole thing. We know that there are some um, tools out there like MVivo if you want to, uh, you know, um, analyze data at scale, but it's not specifically to news and so on. And that's basically for researchers. But I was looking for a tool or a way that we can both do it from a research point of view, but then come up with answers for the ordinary person on the street or the everyday user. That has been what I've been thinking about and that's what I'm sharing with you today. That way we can um, design studies that can help to start to answer for society because that's what most of us do as uh, human doctors. How do we help society cure this problem or at least begin to cure the problem? How do we hold those accountable um, who are polluting the atmosphere? How do we even know who they are? And then how do we empower the common user, the everyday user, and I use common user just to mean the man on the street, to be able to make their own decisions about what kind of news they consume and how do they know if they should be consuming that news or not? That's where I start to, especially these days that we have AI tools, I started to look at, uh, I started looking at um, natural language processing and deep learning and things like that, AI tools, machine learning. How can we incorporate that in the news area um, in order to help with this problem? So I started thinking, well, maybe we could generate parameters of what objective and unbiased news is. If we do that, then we can analyze news stories at scale, whether I am an individual on my couch or whether I'm a researcher in, in an institution. We can start to analyze news stories at scale, what they call big data these days, in order to find for ourselves or for the user, him or herself, what is correct or how do I trust a particular news source or not. All right, so we can use what is called these days sentiment analysis, I'm sure most of you are hearing those terms now working in this area to probe for themes. We can probe for tone in a story, tenor, detect the kind of emotions behind stories. And before now, we could do those in terms of content analysis or discourse analysis, but that would be a lot of work to code by hand. For those of you who have worked, done research in this area, coding by hand, you can only do so much. And human sentiments, even if you prepare your code book and so on, is the person who still has to apply the code book to whatever rules you have set. But now with AI, once we have um, designed what the parameters are, 
objectively, then the AI and all these tools now can go do the work for us. So it completely takes human sentiments or human emotions, or I want a, a, this story to sound this way or that way. The AI tools these days would help us to, to do that. Then we take the whole human person out of it. And so we can give stories, as you'll see in a moment, scores on different parameters as we see fit. We can measure the sentiment scores against what we call news values or news canons, all right? And then we can check whether these uh, numbers, how do they adhere to journalistic canons? How skewed are they for, from what is expected? And we can do this to evaluate the work of particular reporters. We can do this to evaluate the work of particular news stations. It doesn't matter what the ideology of the news station is, or even to particular stories. We can apply this to the story level, even to headlines. It just depends on what um, the researcher or the user is interested to do. And so we can evaluate uh, work by particular reporters, news agents. Um, we have some tools these days, but they'll mostly just fact check whether something is correct or not, whether somebody has told uh, a, a Pinocchio or not, we, we have those. But to go beyond that, to try and test all the different journalistic or uh, parameters or canons is kind of what I'm getting at here. So I make the bold claim with this study um, that by using AI power tools, researchers will be able to analyze stories at scale, generate findings on journalistic canons, rank news stories or reporters or media outlets on dimensions of these objective parameters, generate a score for reputation, for fairness, for balance, for objectivity, any of those, and then enable the everyday user to recognize what, what kind of news they're getting, what is questionable, or what they can trust. Is kind of what I'm getting to. So the outcome that I'm looking for this is practicality, practical use. So we can provide guidance for the public, um, how to spot stories that have agenda, how to steer news consumers away from outlets that may not respect journalistic standards and help them go towards the ones that um, are more, uh, you know, um, you know, follow the journalistic canons. So the framework that I'm using for this study is the journalistic standards themselves that the news agencies set, okay? Um, we want our news to be sacrosanct, to be true, to be unbiased, and for reporters to be fair. So those canons have been echoed by several news sources. I just have two here for you, the Associated Press, you know, they insist on the highest standard of integrity and ethical behavior so that they can deliver news that is uh, um, free of inaccuracies, bias, and distortions. And the New York Times will tell you that their greatest strength is their authority and reputation, and they will do everything to make sure that that's not diluted. So therefore, those are the standards that I'm suggesting that um, we can come up with tools to do that. And because my time is running out, I wanna take you to what I'm calling the M Editor, which is uh, copyrighted and trademarked right now. It's a tool I'm developing currently that can crawl the web and do this, this kind of work, gather the stories, use artificial intelligence, do the analysis, generate the scores that the user now with their cell phone or any of their other devices can see this um, exhibited for them. So this is an example of what the tool will look like. It is currently in development. I have about 30 days to get it to um, the next level. And I just thought I would take a moment to just show you guys just very briefly here. So if you give me one moment, I will just go over onto hop onto my computer to just give you um, um, a, a bigger look, a look at the bigger picture on what I am trying to do. And it is not fully developed at this point, but I would like to hear your thoughts. So let me go ahead and share that if I can find my share button. Okay, here it is. Um, yeah. Let me see here. Okay, I'm going to share and I'm going to explain to you how this might work. Uh, it's going to work. And here we are. So for this case, in this case, for instance, I will show you behind the scenes. This is the database. Um, here you have uh, the canons, objectivity, fairness, balance, and accuracy. We are generating those scores. And then we are operationalizing what this means, what objectivity means, facts only, no value words, both sides present, facts are ver verifiable, things like that. And then once we do that, we will go ahead and take the stories. In this case, I have one story. I made this story up, um, the Iranian drone attack. And then we will take that story, as you can see here, the full text of the story is in here. 
as you can see. And then we can generate, uh, we can tell the AI that's in here, right here. We can tell the AI then to go evaluate this story and then generate us a score for that particular story. And then once um, that is generated, we can go in the front, which is what you were seeing earlier, and the user can see the score that this particular story generates or this particular um, uh, reporter, if you want to look at the reporter. And you can see here the tool, this is the story. You have the canons here, how each canon is operationalized. You can see where a story is scoring on objectivity or fairness, in this case, four for objectivity. And then if you're reviewing, say, accuracy, in this case, they're on a five. That means you can actually verify the facts. On fairness, they're scoring a four. And on balance, they're scoring a, two, a three, which gives the story an overall score here, as we have seen, of, um, of 16 on 20, for instance. So that's kind of how I feel that we can empower the user to not just be um, helpless, but to be able to then... Um, you know, um, look at stories, be empowered, be educated to make their own decisions, choose which new sources they are going to trust and listen to, um, and then go from there in how we begin to deal with these deep fakes and so on. So I'm going to stop there. I would like to hear, um, then researchers can do this, users can do this, news houses themselves can do this in order that they can self-police to make sure that the stories that are going out there are not one-sided or biased and so on. I will stop here and take your thoughts on your questions. I know that was quick.